Evening, everybody. Now, if you can hear us, give us a thumbs up. Tonight, we've got a special show for you. All sorts of news. First of all, I was horribly wrong, and I'm going to correct that in tonight's episode about the Broncos. <laughs> We're talking Maverick. We're talking Bronco. We're talking about general information about recalls, so a little consumer reports, reliability, um, studies, if you can really call them that. They're sci certainly not scientific studies. Uh, <laughs> be like... Anyways, we'll get into that. Anyways, we've got a good show tonight. We're going to be breaking up the show into different episodes. So episode one or part one of the show, we're going to be talking about, well, dealer inventory. What's the state of that dealer inventory? Episode two, we're going to be talking about Ford Mavericks that have actually arrived. What do they look like? What's on them? What's going on with them? And really break down when were they ordered? When did they get scheduled? When did they actually go to the plant to get built? How long did it take to, for them to get built? And then after how long, we always want to know, how long does it take to get built? When does it go to the factory? Um, you know, are they on time? So we're going to be talking all about that. We'll be talking about what happens when things go off to the body shop. Like Marie's went off to the body shop for an entire month. Total mix up there. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about what was missing on her order as a good reminder of what you need to do to make sure everything's hunky-dory and A-OK -okay when it comes in. Yes, I'm a little corny, but that's me. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be talking about all that and, of course, actual delivery time. Once it's built, what can you expect? So mm -hmm. really, we're going that's through interesting. the whole Maverick experience. It's interesting. You lived through it, biting mm -hmm. your you don't bite your nails, but it's an expression, biting your nails. i got to explain it. French and English do not have the same expressions, and it can cause couples fights when you don't understand each other. Communication is key, folks. <laughs> and then we're talking about episode three, Ford Bronco engine details and how I was horribly wrong. Wow. And then we'll be going on to episode four, <laughs> recalls and consumer reports, reliability studies. So don't be fooled, folks. You'll want to make it to that. And then episode five of this live is going to be about live questions answered. So Q&A live. So you can throw some real tough ones at me and watch me sweat. It's fun <laughs> stuff, folks. Now, Marie tonight, just as a sideline before we get down to business, Marie tonight said, you can't call things episodes. Tim does that. And it reminded me of that South Park episode where it was all about Simpsons did that. So they're joking around and how Simpsons had done everything. Well, Tim Bartz has also basically done everything. He's a legend. So I always appreciate when he's in the community uh, every week. And I'm on his show every week. And sometimes I watch it in replay because, well, uh, driving home and whatnot. So you're in for a, a treat tonight. And the reason I called these episodes is, well, because I really like Star Wars. And we'll be talking about that in our live members. We'll be talking about personal information. You can ask us questions and really the whole membership experience. Uh, yes, of course, it helps support the channel and we truly appreciate it. It helps us long term, a lot of these vehicles, long term review and also long haul these re vehicles. So sometimes we drive these vehicles for days to put them through their paces. Well, that costs uh, uh, money in regards to depreciation. It costs money in regards to fuel and it takes up time. So membership really helps. So we want to tonight say thank you very much mm -hmm. to the members and we want to pay you back. We want to start doing more regular lives with you. And we're going to be doing one this Friday at seven. Uh, we're going to actually check out the time to make sure we're not doing it at the same time as Tim because Tim now does uh, a members live I think actually every Friday so this Friday I'll review the time and come with your questions it's going to be all about helping you buy a vehicle so you can bring questions about you know is this the right interest rate uh, is this the right price what price should I expect and we'll talk a little bit about that tonight in the Q&A but that's what we want the membership to be about we want to be there to save you thousands specifically we talk about general ways to save you thousands on the show when we're reporting the news and giving you uh, buyer's tips, but we really want to make the membership about that. Now, um, of course, I left my glass of water upstairs, so I'll try to get through this <laughs> without coughing, but let's get right down to business and remove this little HP support. I'm here to support you. <laughs> HP apparently wants to support me, but I'm hard-headed and I'll say no. So yeah, I love Star Wars. And um, well, you know the expression, Sith, uh, Sith deal in absolutes. Well, there's been a lot of absolutes on the market these days. And you know, I mean the auto news market, 
saying that you should completely avoid the auto market. Do not buy. And I've got an episode coming out on that. So we'll cover that uh, specifically a little 15 minute episode with Marie and I in it. So you'll want to catch that because the whole market's saying don't, don't buy. And I'd say, well, only Sith deal in absolutes. And I don't agree. Uh, the same people were telling you not to buy. Well, some people, I think of Scotty, Scotty, and Scotty's been telling you not to buy a new vehicle for the for, for, for the longest time <laughs> I can remember. He just doesn't like new vehicles, of course. Um, as a mechanic, he loves it when you buy an old vehicle that he can repair. But it's not everybody that can do that all the time. <laughs> every ma- Almost every mechanic I know is all about oh buy those old vehicles buy those uh, older vehicles Cheaper you know and- save money but they work on themselves they work on them themselves and then they also have their own oil stains all over their yards i don't understand mechanics vehicles seem to often be leaking oil all over at least my <laughs> friends that are mechanics my friends that are watching that are mechanics they'll understand but then there's also <laughs> that small percentage that just don't want any hassle they work on them all day and they have newer vehicles and they don't want to be, you know, left on foot. A special thank you to Danny who prepared Marie's Maverick. So yeah. he did a great job preparing Ma- Marie's Maverick. And did a beautiful job. <laughs> yes, uh, that was really, really good of him. And uh, just have to pop this up before we get down to uh, business here. Uh, only a Sith deals in absolute. So it is absolutely not a horrible time to buy a vehicle. And it wasn't in 21 and it wasn't in 2022 when they're saying don't buy. It's a horrible time. It's all about the deal that you work out with your dealer. You got to, or first of all, these days, you've got to order from the right dealer because otherwise it can be disastrous. And we've got a few questions Pre pro pre programmed into the show about people that have had really bad experiences, uh, just saying that you know, Ford, you know, bad word, you know, essentially screwed me over because you know the price doubled. We'll be talking about that. That's almost always that's that's the dealer. So you got to order from the right dealer these days, and you got to work out the right price. One of the comments was, you know, don't ever buy at MSRP. Well, that's basically you know, the deal these days. And we, we've bought at MSRP and we've actually fared really well. We made money, uh, actually buying at MSRP and then selling, um, you know, basically a year later. So we'll be talking about that now down to the real show. So we've given everyone time to get into the show. We start at uh, 7:30. We talk for a few minutes, let everyone get in, run through the show. Now, episode one, just got to get back to where we were at with this here. So episode one here, we're talking about the state of dealer inventory. So the state of dealer inventory is good news, really good news here. A lot of Mavericks are starting to get scheduled. A lot of Mavericks are even even also showing up. We went from getting about one to two Mavericks per month to sometimes no Mavericks in a month. And we just received six. I'll be talking specifically tonight about five, all about the information about, you know, what are they? When were they ordered? How long did it take? Did they get pushed back and moved around and beaten up? So we'll be talking all about that. That'll be interesting. But for now, we're just going to talk about dealer inventory. F-150s, they're starting to build up in lots. And if you're a GM fan, well, you can you can plan on getting a GM or a Chevrolet or a Colorado at you know, from the dealer and GM, you might actually even get a little bit, you know, a thousand dollars off or $1,500 off Ford right now in the States, actually in the United States had a bit of a promotion in regards to interest rate here. We had that, we still have that promotion going on low, very, very low interest on a 2022 F-150. If you can find one new, it's at 1.99% interest. However, if you're going to lease, and I recommend leasing for many reasons that I don't have time to get into tonight, but if you're going to lease, I'd actually suggest pay a little more um, because it's odd getting a 2023, it's not going it, to, yeah, you're going to spend, let's say an extra $90 a month or $100 a month, but I think it's well worth it in regards to trade value because two years down the road, if you feel like trading again, it's going to be worth about four or $5,000 more. And I'd also highly recommend the model I recommend is either leasing a Tremor or an F-150 
302 Sport. And here's the thing, there's not a huge difference in price between a 302 Sport and an F-150 Tremor if you can handle the five and a half foot box. And here's the other really key thing to keep in mind, an XLT 300 versus a 302 Sport, there's about $85, $90 difference on the lease. But in two years, three years, or four years, you've got a vehicle that's got a trade value, at least in Canadian dollars, the Sport is worth about $10,000 more. That is going to be a fun trade to have. It's going to be worth more, almost certainly worth more than your, a lot more than your res residual. That means your buy it back price. And don't think with a lease, you have to give back your keys. The dealer, some dirty dealers want you to think you have to give back your keys at the end of the lease. No, at Ford, it's a lease with option to buy. So essentially, it's a lot like a purchase. It's a purchase disguised as a lease. So it's a no risk purchase. Because when it's when you have a purchase, let's say you finance 84 months as most people on the market do now, you get to the four year mark and you go, oh, I'd like to trade in and you know what? You it you might owe, let's say 20 uh 30 and it might only be worth 20, in which case you have to refinance 10,000 on your next vehicle or cough up $10,000 mm -hmm. cash or throw it That's on the fun. credit card. Not fun at all. Brings up your prices on your next one. If you're on a lease at the end of the four years, worst case scenario, if your buy it back price is 30 and it's worth 20, you give back the keys. Marie, you want to tell them what you chose? You you had this option. Are, were you going to purchase your yeah. lease or re, uh, purchase your Maverick or lease your Maverick? Tell us about what you did while I run upstairs for some water. Yeah, I lease it. And at first we calculate uh, with the lease, it was less per month. Uh, so we, we check and we, we check with the seven years um, uh, buying option. It was more per month. So with that one, it costs less and I can leave the lease uh, sooner. So it's easier for me. And with the residual, I have a 50% uh, re residual on the full price of the car. So uh, I can choose if I want to stay with that car at the end of the, the four year lease. And if not, I just give the key back. And what's surprising, and we will maybe talk about that more after, but uh, all the um, accessories that I choose, we can put it in the residual so I don't have to pay 100% now during the lease. So that's the good news. Uh, so the bed cover that I choose will have a 50% in the residual. So it was so perfect for me. Now, <laughs> <It was> less. <laughs> I love numbers. I'm a huge nerd for numbers. So I actually remember her residual being at 53% because she has 16,000 kilometers per year on her lease. And a 53% residual means she only pays 47% of the vehicles. The vehicle. Now, if you're sales, important to order from the right dealer because if your dealer has sales staff that actually can get off their butts and get to work, they're going to print out all build and choose all the accessories, print them out on, on the Ford accessories and internal website. And it tells you what exact number, including the exact pennies, because if you're one penny off, the contract is not uh, legitimate and Ford will make you come, make the client come back and sign. You can't just say, I'll pay the difference. No, re-signing the whole contract. But if you get it right down to the correct penny, you only pay 47% of your roll up cover. It was $1,600 Canadian. But when you're only paying 47% of it, so you're paying less than $800 spread out over four years. What's great is if Marie keeps her Maverick, let's say one or two years, depending on when, when there's a plug-in Maverick available. Well, on trade, the Maverick's going to be worth the same whether it has a roll-up cover or not. So what's really cool is you can take that roll-up cover off, which you'll have paid one-fourth, let's say in a year you trade it in. You'll have paid one-fourth of $800, so $200, right? Yeah. So you'll have paid $200, and that roll-up cover is now hers. $200 for a $1,600 roll-up cover. But I guess some dealer will check the contract and say, oh, you have this with the car, I want, I want it back if I take back the car, no? They don't check that much. At the end of a lease, if you have to give back the vehicle to the manufacturer, 
Yes, the manufacturer, if you residualize those parts, they're not yours if you're sending the vehicle back. Mm -hmm. But the only reason you'd be sending the vehicle back is if it's worth way less than the buy it back price. And the Maverick is not gonna be worth way less. The F-150 is not gonna be way worth much less mm -hmm. than those buyback prices in 10 years. For, for an entire dealership, I've never once seen an F-150 get sent back to Ford. They're always worth more than the buy it back it's prices the at the end. Buy it. Now, some dealers on the trade will say, no, I'm, get, you know, I'm buying you this vehicle and I have to have that cover. They just want an easier sale because when you put something for sale in the internet, you can't be like, hey, we're selling this Maverick and we're asking $1,000 or $2,000 more than anyone else because it has some accessories. That's that's not how internet used purchasing goes down. Mm -hmm. In reality, whether there's a t hard top cover or not the vehicle needs to be advertised at the same price and will sell at the same price mind you a cover will make their sale a little easier so make their life a little harder and keep your accessories <laughs> now there's some that only make sense to leave on the vehicle a plastic cover inside the bed you don't take that out because they can't resell it you know and people are going to laugh at them like you're trying to sell me a truck with a painted you know metallic bed i, I can't use the truck as a truck if it doesn't have a bed cover mm -hmm. or at least a bed mat like i threw on on mine because my electric truck is a fancy you know fancy boys truck, I guess. Um, I thought I'd have the Raptor at the same time to do any hard work, but it's actually gonna help us rebuild a cottage. So I, I call myself a fancy guy, but it, uh, we'll be working construction on the cottage. And <laughs> yeah. the, the lightning's gonna help out. So will the Maverick. So stay tuned for a lot of towing videos. Now, John Ashton. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, to tell you. John Ashton, thank you for the $5 tips. He says, hello, Johnny and Mary. Hope you have, uh, you're have you having a good night. So, yes, thank you so much to being here with us. Thank you very much. Always appreciated the, the added help. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about dealer inventory, dealer inventory is going up everywhere. And the automotive community is reacting like this is a crisis. Uh, they're, they're talking about how, you know, Ben Hardy was talking about how prices, uh, sorry, volume, sales volumes have come down from 2019. Well, yeah, they absolutely have. And they're, they're the lowest in 2022. That's because so many less vehicles were made. Millions of less vehicles were not made that were supposed to be made. So yeah, it's not, you know, when you look back right now, they're looking at 2022 and, you know, how they're seeing it is, hey, this is evidence that the auto market's completely crashed and you shouldn't buy unless, you know, don't buy and wait until there's the there's these huge rebates. And like I said in last week's live models that have, you know, month after month, huge rebates on them. They also have horrible resale and they have these huge rebates because generally people, you have to pay them to take them. You, when you go to, you feel like a winner getting that rebate up front, but you're really going to feel like a huge loser when you go to sell that vehicle at the end. And often they're not the most reliable. Generally, they're less reliable. Mm. Now, the vehicles, you know, people, and we'll get the, to this in the Q&A, but one person said, you know, only complete idiots in the end also use the word morons pay MSRP. Well, I paid a Bronco at MSRP and I was totally okay with that. And that Bronco for well, almost a year of driving and eight, 19, basically 20,000 kilometers cost me $2,000 in depreciation. Not that bad. And we had so much fun. Had a lot of fun. Lot. Yeah. And we didn't lose any money at all, actually, on our blue Bronco. So mm -hmm. paying MSRP can be good. It all depends on, you know, and I, I know someone who paid MSRP, of course, for their Lightning. They're all selling at MSRP. Mm -hmm. And he had an offer $50,000 more than what he paid for his. Wow. That's Mind you, <laughs> it is to be exported. It breaks some Can Can uh, Canadian Ford rules. So he didn't export it. He knew he was it was going to get exported, but he could have taken $50,000, put it in his pocket and gone all the way to the bank laughing. Is he, you know, is someone who paid a lightning at MSRP an idiot? No, not at all. So we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll cover that. But the state of dealer inventory is that inventories are up. This does not indicate that there is an absolute crisis now. Remember, volume is all about volume over the year. And traditionally, winter volume is low. So and anyways, uh, February, January and February, January was higher than December. 
February was higher than January. So far, we're trending up. So I do believe prices are going to continue to increase, not nearly as dramatically as they did 2022. And 2022 price increases made up for 2021 lack of price increases. 2020 and 2021, automakers were actually quite worried that, you know, there would be a crisis and that, you know, there, people would just all of a sudden stop buying. Those interest rate increases scared them because they figured shoppers, us buyers, we'd stop buying and they'd be ruined. So in 2020, barely any price increases. 2021, barely any price increases. 2022, what happened? They made up for two years of next to no price increases. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, F-150s weren't going up in price or barely, basically not going up in price and not going up in interest for two years straight. And the inventory kept going lower and lower. And I'm like, I was like, I, I, and I hate to say, to admit this, but I was thinking they need to increase the interest rate or increase the price. They've got to slow down purchases. We're running out. We did run out. It was mayhem. <laughs> we ran out. And now we have vehicles. They're still not up to where they were 2018, 2019. But we're not that far off. I'd say before, uh, you know, I was saying earlier about uh, two months ago, a uh, month, two months ago, we're, uh, you know, we only had about a fourth of what we once had. Well, now I'd say we're, we're only missing about 30%. So we're missing in certain models, still not very many Broncos, um, but we're starting to get explorers. We're starting to get edges and all manufacturers that basically what's going on at Ford is going down basically at all manufacturers. So inventory's up. I don't, I think prices are going to have, we're not going to have those crazy increases we saw in 2022. So in 2023, we're going to have some either no increases or very slight increases. Well, slight, you know, on a I don't expect the F-150 to go up 10% this year, but 4 or 5%, yes, I, I would expect it to go up anywhere from 2 to 5%. But I do expect, I hope, if inventories are still high enough to see better interest rates. I think that's where we're going to see the promotions. And you're going to appreciate that when it comes time to reselling your F-150 or your Maverick. Now, you paid your Maverick at MSRP. Mm -hmm. And instantly, from owning it, it's already worth thousands of dollars more um basically from what you paid for you got a price protection a special not a price protection anymore sorry a special rebate <laughs> and with that special rebate if you were to sell your maverick yourself you could basically make eight thousand dollars so even if you wow. would have paid it msrp it's still worth more than that yeah so. you saw uh, used one being uh yeah. Sell at higher pricing than the new, so. Than yours. So yeah. patience pays off.